Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. You've covered a lot of fairly crunchy and detailed games here in the monastery, but in the eternal debate of fluff and crunch, I've always looked at it very simply. Sometimes I want a glass of well-aged wine with the right meal to accentuate it, prepared by a sommelier. Other times I just want to go to the local bar for a burger and a tall beer. After all, variety is the spice of life. In role-playing games, the latter is referred to as beer and pretzels games. These are lighter affairs that aren't swimming in detailed mechanics or serious narrative tones. They're the exact opposite, the popcorn flick of RPGs, if you will. Today we look at one such game in Dungeon Slayers, a game with an old-school mindset but not necessarily old-school mechanics. Does it hold up? Let's find out. At 172 pages, Dungeon Slayers is very light, with little in the way of fluff material. Art is simple when it appears, and it channels the spirit of early D&D in its implementation. While the text works out fine and I have little problem with the choice in font or spacing, there is one elephant in the room I need to address. Dungeon Slayers was originally a German game. 99% of the time, the translation works, but there is that 1% where the words don't match up. For example, you might have a term using one word in a certain part, and as another similar word in another part. Anima has a similar problem in its base game and its expansions, and while it's not intrusive, it is something to keep in mind if you ever find yourself raising an eyebrow with this game. Character creation is intended to be a mix of old and new school, and we'll be exploring this with Arvo Rana, an elven fighter. After picking race and class, our first step is to determine attributes. We have 20 points to distribute between three attributes, alongside our plus one to agility for being an elf. Here we'll go with Body 8, Agility 8, and Mind 5. Step 2 is Traits. Each attribute has two traits associated with it, and we have 8 points to spend alongside a plus 1 Strength for being a fighter. Our final spread here is Strength 3, Toughness 2, Reflexes 2, and Dexterity 2. These attributes make his derived attributes as follows. Hit Points 20, Defense 10, Melee Attack 11, Range Attack 10, Dodge 10, Initiative 10, and Speed 5. Step 3 is Talents. As an elf, we have one talent point to spend, which we'll put in our first rank of close combat, granting a plus one to melee attacks. Lastly, equipment. We'll start with simple clothing, steel, flint and tinder, two healing herbs, a blanket, a kit bag, and 10 GP. We'll spend four GP each on a set of leather armor and a halberd, and two GP on a dagger. If there's any single elephant in the room regarding character creation, it's going to be the talent system. It's not bad, but the sheer amount of choice might appear daunting especially since the book doesn't give you much in the way of guidance on effective talent allocation, and you only have so many points to use. I know it sounds like I'm getting repetitive on this sort of thing, but I gotta call it out when I see it. If you have a big pool of choices, it's important to represent it in a way that doesn't appear as if you're throwing players straight into the middle. I think this wouldn't be as much of a problem if your choice of class had more on the table in terms of benefits. As for the age-old magic problem, it's still there, but it's not as bad as in other instances. All classes might gain the same rate of talents, but because the magic user has an advantage with their starting set of spells, they'll come off as if they have a head start. This issue is slightly smaller at lower levels, but I think some class features for Fighter and Scout could have helped a lot. Dungeon Slayers uses a roll under d20 system. Typically this is rooted in attribute plus trait as the target number, plus or minus any situational modifiers. Subsequently, a natural 1 is a critical success, while a natural 20 is a critical failure. If you have a case where your total, i.e. your target number, is higher than 20, you would roll 1 with a TN of 20, an additional roll with a TN at the remaining amount of points. In combat, you have one movement and one action, much of which works in a way similar to most old school style games. An interesting, if optional, twist on the combat is the slaying dice and slayer points. The former applies an exploding die effect when you roll criticals in combat. This means that you can explode die on attacks and on defense. The second half, Slayer Points, is a kind of momentum system you gain from dealing damage, or removing damage in the case of healers. This resource is capped at 3, and can be spent on extra actions, bonuses, or provide similar cheats for combatants. Magic does not necessarily have a resource in the traditional sense. No mana, no spell charges, etc. Instead your resource is time. Kind of. 
A spellcaster treats one spell they have access to as their active spell they may cast. Once that spell is cast, it cannot be cast again until its cooldown time has passed. Switching active spells is a mind plus reason check, and is a full round action where a success changes the spell, and a critical lets you change spells as a free action. This is a very resource light magic system, but one that might take some getting used to based on your background. In my opinion, the fact that attacks and defense have their own rules without set damage might result in a lot of whiffing. Not as bad as Warhammer can, but still enough to give me a bit of pause. The fact that it's about differences rather than final numbers is going to appear roundabout, but I feel it works better in practice than in execution. First things first, Dungeon Slayers is a free game. That alone makes the game worth at least a glance since you're not going to lose out simply by grabbing a PDF. It is most definitely an old school game in its aesthetic and design, but I would hesitate to call this a retro clone that I thought it was when I initially got it. It isn't trying to emulate an older edition in the same way as, say, Osric or Castles and Crusades. It's trying to emulate a feel whilst being light on crunch where it doesn't matter. I would not recommend going into this game with a retro clone mindset. Beyond that, the game does have a very strong foundation. I do wish classes had a stronger identity and were a little less stingy with talents, but that's an issue easily remedied with some house ruling. All that said, Dungeon Slayers gets a stamp of recommended. It might not feel the retro niche for some, but it's definitely a strong contender for beer and pretzel style play. Just like the gods intended.